it's Jeff, Kilo 3, Juliet Romeo Zulu. And today we're going to talk about the DX code of conduct. Ever since the beginning of amateur radio, organizations wanted to keep order on the frequencies and hold people to ethics and standards. The International Amateur Radio Union, the American Radio Relay League, and many others. And also other small organizations and individuals attempted to do the same. So how did the DX code of conduct come about? During the 2009 VK9 GMW Mellish Reef Expedition, listener Randy Johnson, W6SJ, Silent Key, was disgusted of what he heard on the air, all the chaos, the poor operator behavior. I'm sure most people can recently remember a similar situation. So he was part of the first class CW Operators Club, also called the FOC. Randy, along with Roger Wester, G3SXW, Silent Key, Gary Hinson, ZL2IFB, Robert Whelan, G3PJT, Robert Casca, S53R, and many others from inside and outside of the FOC worked on getting these ideas together that eventually became the DX Code of Conduct. So after the creation of the DX Code of Conduct, in 2016, the Yasmi Foundation recognized the contribution of the code and its website, dx-code.com, had made to amateur radio. They provided them with a grant intended to support the website. Currently, the website is maintained by James Shrine, N6DHZ. After 2016, word of the DX Code of Conduct spread throughout the amateur radio community. It appeared on sites like the Radio Society of Great Britain, the Northern California DX Club, Parks on the Air's website, and many, many more. The DX Code of Conduct basically is to keep order on the air. It provides for a basic common courtesy between operators and shows respect for others. What does the DX Code of Conduct actually entail? It entails 13 statements. Now, as I read these, notice when I say DX Station, I will also mean POTA or SOTA activator or the operator. If I say DX Cluster, I will also mean the POTA or SOTA spotting site or any other spotting site available on the internet. Number one, I will listen and listen and then listen again before calling. Number two, I will only call if I can copy the DX station properly. Number three, I will not trust the DX cluster and will be sure of the DX station's call sign before calling. Number four, I will not interfere with the DX station nor anyone calling and will never tune up on the DX frequency or in the QSX slot. Number five, I will wait for the DX station to end a contact before I call. Number six, I will always send my full call sign. Number seven, I will call and then listen for a reasonable interval. I will not call continuously. Number eight, I will not transmit when the DX operator calls another call sign, not mine. Number nine, I will not transmit when the DX operator queries a call sign, not like mine. Number 10, I will not transmit when the DX station requests geographic areas other than mine. Number 11, when the DX operator calls me, I will not repeat my call sign unless I think he has copied it incorrectly. Number 12, I will be thankful if and when I do make a contact. Number 13, I will respect my fellow hams and conduct myself so as to earn their respect. Now those 13 statements are really not too hard to follow. Everyone can lose their good judgment in times when they are excited or anxious so it can happen but you need to be in more control of yourself 
Stewardess, please let me handle this. Calm down. I'll get back to your seat. I'll take care of this car. Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. So is it for DX only? No, of course it's not. Why would you treat any QSO on the air, be it HF, VHF, UHF, FT8, CW, any digital mode, any digital voice mode differently? You still wouldn't behave like a complete alpha hotel. Some people might because they have a mental imbalance, but the majority of people will not. DX Code of Conduct really can be applied to all bands, all modes, and all programs and activities. It doesn't matter if you are a DX station or trying to get to a DX station or someone across the country for you or across the state. Just because DX is in the name, does it really make it for DX only? The idea of the DX Code of Conduct has evolved, in my opinion. So why use it? It's common courtesy and respect to others. No one likes someone that acts like a complete and utter alpha hotel. You wouldn't like it if it was done to you. So why would you do it to someone else? And you really need to act like a grown adult. Most likely, a lot of people are over the age of 21. You have a job, you have a home, you pay rent or a mortgage on, you have at least one car, you have a family with kids, maybe they're adults by now. So act like an adult. And poor behavior discourages new amateur radio operators from getting on the air. No matter what country they're from, what band or frequency they're on, or what mode of amateur radio operation or program they might be participating in. Some poor behavior to avoid. Throwing out your call sign repeatedly. How about throwing out only the suffix of your call sign, which is the part after the number. Throwing out your call sign when a completely different station has been called. Or throwing out your call sign when a DX station or activator is in the middle of a contact with another station. And another poor behavior to avoid is throwing out your call sign before the end of the QSO, which is where the activator or the DX station will customarily say thank you for the contact 73. And the other station, the hunter or whoever, replies back thanks in 73. So the main lesson to learn here is simple. We've all been taught this since we were little kids. Treat others how you would want to be treated and don't be an alpha hotel. And here is a uh, recent example of poor operator behavior from the Pota Entity US 1743 and it was a twofer with US 0898. So enjoy this short clip. I would never f all that f hole. So in that video, it does show some very, very poor behavior. I myself would not have called on that station. I will have called them out saying, I am not going to call you. No matter what you say or how you ask, I am not calling you. That type of behavior is just rude. Now, if that station was in the opposite position, where he was the DX station and someone was trying to make contact to him and was shouting out, DX, DX, DX. Would he like that? Probably not. So if you want to learn more about the DX Code of Conduct, you can go to its website at dx-code.com. Right there on the screen and in all my videos, it's linked down in the description below. Thank you all for watching and until next time, 73.
saying that you are the most obnoxious, trumped up, party little smackhead it has ever been my misfortune to encounter. Diak, 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 Diak. Because you're a complete bastard.